Hi everyone, I'm Daniel Roth from the Blazor team. In this video, we're going to learn all about components and how you can use Blazor components to build rich interactive web UI. Blazor web apps are made up of components. A component is a reusable piece of web UI. It encapsulates the rendering logic for the component and also how it handles UI events. You define components in Blazor using Razor syntax, which is a combination of HTML and C Sharp. Razor components are defined in .razor files. And let's take a look at our project to see where those are at. OK, so here's our Blazor web app. And we can see that in this components folder right here, are all of our Razor files that define the, the Blazor components for our web application, counter, home, weather, and many others. Here's the home.razor file, which defines the home page for our Blazor web app. You remember before that it had some HTML content, and we could change that HTML content. We just save that, and that content then updated on the page. Great. So lots of HTML here. That makes sense. But we've got some other stuff, too. So up at the top, we can see we have this at page directive. What's that doing? Well, this is how you can um, assign an address or a location for your component. It's actually, we call it a route. You're adding a route for this component. And that's why when we browse to the root of this Blazor web app, we see the home component render. That's why we get that, that content there. Below, we also have this page title tag. And it looks kind of like an HTML tag, but it's a different color and it's using capital letters. What is that? Well, page title is also a component. It's a built-in component in the Blazor framework that lets us specify the title for the page. So that's why up above here in the tab, we see that it says home. That's coming from this page title component. If we change that to something else, like I don't know, home page, and save that, that should then update, and there it goes. So now we have home page in our, as our, uh, the title for this page. Cool. So you can use components from other components using this HTML style syntax. All right, let's look at some other examples. Well, we have multiple other components in this app. Like we have counter.razor. Counter.razor is what's being used to define that counter page on the, the Blazor web application. Uh, if we look at it, we can see again it has a, a route. So that's why when we're looking at the Blazor web app and we browse to slash counter, that we end up on, we see this component rendered. All right, so that's cool. But if we go back to home, because counter is just another component, we should be able to, let's, let's do this side by side. I'm going to bring up both apps together. There's the home page. OK, so if we do uh, uh, write a counter tag, and the, you know, the name matching the, the name of the razor file, and let's go ahead and save that. We can see now we have a counter component that shows up on the home page. If we click the button, we can see that the count goes up, and it's in addition to the counter that's already at the uh, slash counter route. That counter still works, but now we have another counter on the home page. Uh, what else could we do? Well, we also have a, a weather component, you know, weather.razor. That's what's defining this weather uh, forecast page over here on our, uh, on our web application. So we click on that. We can see there's that uh, table of randomly generated weather data. Uh, can we add that to our home page? Uh, sure. Let's go to the home page here and then add another tag called slash weather. And we'll save that into the application. And now we've got a, a weather forecast showing up on the home page. So that's how easy it is to reuse Blazor components. You just use them as like custom HTML tags on your page. All right, let's take a deeper look at counter.razor and see what we have going on here. Blazor components can contain uh, C sharp logic in addition to just you know, HTML markup. On this counter page, we have uh, a couple things here. We've got uh, this P tag, and the P tag is being used to render the value of the, the current count. And we're using this little at character to say that we'd like to render the value of this C sharp variable, current count. Below, we have a, a button. There's a button right there. And this button has an on-click handler. But instead of pointing to like some, some JavaScript, this on-click handler is actually running a C-sharp method, which is defined below. So the C-sharp method, when it runs, you can see that it's incrementing the value of the current count field, which is just defined up above. And then the component re-renders, and it re-renders here in the p tag, and then you see the updated value. So that's, that's how this counter is actually working. Every time we click that button, we're running our, our C-sharp method. 
So you can run C Sharp code from your, uh, your, your Blazor components using Razor syntax. Um, now, some people don't like having you know, a lot of C Sharp code sitting alongside the, their markup. Um, that's OK. Uh, you can actually move this code block into a separate file if you'd like. If we actually click on this code uh, Razor directive, there's this little light bulb that shows up. And there's this code action that will actually extract that code, uh, code block and put it in this uh, code behind file over here. So now we have a counter.razor.cs. It's just a C-sharp file. And we can see that this has generated for us a counter class, and it's a partial class. Now, what the Razor compiler will do when this app is built is it will take this counter partial class and combine it with the C -sharp class that gets generated from our counter.razor file. When you think about a, a Razor file, you can really think about it as just a C -sharp class. It's a convenient way to write a C -sharp class that captures some HTML rendering logic in addition to some, some, some other code. All right, so that's what's happening there. So that's a pattern that you can use. I actually prefer to have all the code in, in one file. It's all part of the, you know, the UI layer for my application, so I prefer this pattern. But feel free to use whatever makes you happy. Okay, so we can define members on our, on our component using Razor syntax, using C Sharp. What else can we do? Well, we could also add some like control flow logic. Like let's add an, uh, an if statement here, like a conditional. So if the current count is greater than three, let's display some HTML. And Razor is really smart about being able to transition back and forth between C Sharp and HTML. We're just going to put a P tag right in here, and we'll render, um, I don't know, you win. I can say that's the, the magic number where you, uh, you win the prize for clicking at least three times, or three times or more. All right, so let's go back to our running application. OK, so here we're on the, the counter page. If I click the button one, two, three, and then the fourth time, now it's displaying you in at the bottom. So we're conditionally rendering some markup uh, based on some C-sharp logic. Uh, we can do other things, like we could have a loop. Like let's do a for loop right here. You know, let's add a little i variable that will initialize as 0. And we'll check for when i is less than whatever the current count is, and just increment i. And then inside this loop, um, actually, what we'll do is we'll make a little uh, unordered list right here and wrap that around our for loop. And then we'll use the for loop inside to render a bunch of list items. Uh, we'll just render, you know, clicked. So we should have the word clicked rendered for however many times we've, uh, we've incremented the count. So let's go ahead and save that and go back to our running app. Yeah, so the current count is four, and we, you can see we looped. Uh, four times and rendered clicked for every time we ran that, that loop. If I click again, I get another clicked, and so on and so forth. Okay? So that's how you can add some uh, you know, control flow logic using C Sharp to, to your Blazor components. A nice, powerful combination of HTML and C Sharp. In the weather page, you can actually see that that's how the weather page is working. Like in the weather page, we have a, an if statement. And we're checking to see, do we have the weather forecast data yet? Have we successfully loaded it? Uh, if not, then it starts out by displaying a placeholder. And then if we do have the weather forecast data, you can see below that we're rendering this nice table with all the, the weather details. And there's another loop in here that's looping over each weather forecast and rendering the, the table rows that make up that table, just rendering each value from our well, rendering each value from our uh, forecast uh, uh, data objects. Down below, you can see where we're initializing the weather forecast data in this oninitialized async method. So this is a special method on a Blazor component that gets invoked uh, right after the component is created so that you can initialize some of its state. In here, you can see that we're first uh, you know, just running a, a little task.delay to simulate as if we're going off and doing an API call. And then after that completes, we just generate a bunch of uh, weather forecast data randomly. So don't, don't use this for your next uh, you know, vacation trip planning. This is just random weather data. Okay. Uh, so once we have the, the forecast data, then the table renders. And we can see that on the, the weather page. Like if we watch the weather uh, table render, let's refresh it one more time. You see initially, there, I'm pausing it. There's this loading dot, dot, dot. And then if we let it continue, about half a second later, the weather data shows up. All right, cool. We can also pass parameters to components, like flow data into your components. Uh, for example, maybe on this counter component, instead of just incrementing by one, we want to be able to specify how much the component uh, increments by with every click. So to do that, we just define a component parameter. And a component parameter is just a C-sharp property 
So I'm going to add a, a property here called increment amount. Amount, we'll spell it right. Get set. Okay, and we'll initialize this to be one by default. Okay, and I want this to be the value that we increment by. So a current count, instead of just always doing plus plus, we'll increment by whatever the value is of increment amount. Now to make this uh, property an actual parameter, I need to add the parameter attribute. Okay, so now it's a proper component parameter. What does that mean? Like, how do I use it? Well, if we go to the home component now, where we have a, an instance of the counter component, if I start typing increment amount, you can see I get IntelliSense, and we can specify the value for that parameter using an attribute. Like, let's say we want it to increment by, by two instead of by one. So if we go to the home page now, OK, so now if we click on the Click Me button, yeah, instead of incrementing by one, it's now incrementing by two, and all my other logic that I added is still, still working. If we go to the counter at the uh, slash counter route and I click the button, it's still incrementing by one because we didn't specify that parameter, so it's just using the, the default value. And it's important to note that this, this value that we're specifying for that parameter, it's a full C sharp expression. Like if I want to put like this should be one plus one, you know, or let's do let's do something different. One plus one plus two. And we save that and go back to our app. And now if we click the counter on the, the home page, you know, click. Now it's incrementing by three, so it actually evaluated that, that C sharp expression for us. If I uh, even define a variable, like let's add a little inline code block. This is how you do inline code blocks in, in, in Razor. It's like code that's running in line with the rest of the rendering logic. We could define a new variable here. Let's say this is going to be one plus, well, we'll just do one plus one again. And then instead of having this expression, we'll actually use that uh, amount variable. We get IntelliSense, awesome. We'll save that. And now if we go back to the app and click, we can see it's back to incrementing by, by two. So powerful combination of C Sharp and HTML. Uh, we've just seen how you can build Blazor components using Razor syntax uh, and have components that have dynamic rendering logic.